What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here today and be doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. Oh, here we go. Jump cut, nicks, flip flop, bippity bat, don't talk back jack. The device that I have, I'm gonna tell you right off the jump that the packaging that I got it in is not the official packaging. So I apologize that it's not gonna look the way that it is when you get it if you decide on getting this. I was gonna say mod. Don't, this is not a mod, this is a dripper. Everything that's inside of this is in the final packaging. There might be a couple little peripherals or screws that are inside the official that's not inside of this. The way that I understand it though is everything inside of this is the exact same thing that's in the retail rendition. TVC, Vapor Chronicles, a lot of people know him from Vape Team, Mike Vapes, Vape and Fagan. He's the guy with the black cap, really big dude. Actually has a nice set of guns. He was flexing in a Zoom room. I said, oh shit. This is before my tranny story, of course. me blowing a kiss on them. Ugliest kiss ever. Everybody's making single coil RDAs. That's the thing now. Just like the end of last year with squonks. Okay. Okay. Right now we're in a phase with drippers where we're all about single coils. It was kind of a big thing for many years to do dual coils, but it started off with very, very small single jammies. If you look at some of the original drippers that came out a couple years back, you're gonna notice that a lot of them are single coil renditions. Not saying you couldn't do a dual, it just wasn't designed for that, especially the way that the air is. Like if you go look at an old iGo, we'll say W3. No, that's not, the W3 is a bad example. If you go look at the iGo, T, titanium. The airflow on that is designed solely for mouth to lung. Obviously, we've gone way past that, and now we're more into finding that sweet spot of what makes a dripper good. So you have things like the Recurve RDA, which I did a review on. If you haven't seen that review, I'll post the link right there. Pretty good device. I really, really liked it. Aside from the drip tip, looked like 502. But other than that, it was a really good dripper. Single coil, of course, we're talking about Chinese mass produced. It will be very, very difficult for you to find an extremely airy high-end dripper just because they, it's not really much of a thing. I'm not saying that they haven't existed and I'm not saying that's what this is. I'm not sitting here saying that this is high-end, but I am just giving you a little bit of dripper knowledge or history because a lot of people seem to be confused with the whole single coil scenario saying, oh, this is a new thing, when in reality, it's very much not a new thing. You're just gonna have to ignore the packaging on this. I, there, that means no scratch and sniff for most new people. I know a lot of people look for scratch and sniffs. This box apparently does not have one and it also does not have any information on the box about the device that's inside of it. So without further ado, let's flip it. Digiflavor standard placeholder box, meaning that when you get yours, it's not gonna look anything like this. The box that comes with the drop so low, I believe has a window right here and it's black and then there's white on the top and then you can see the dripper through it. Dripper, go over that shortly. PMMA cap, go over that shortly. Why is it that companies are sending coils but they're not sending you cotton to put inside of the coils? Well, I guess at the same token, most people don't really use the coils that come with it. In one of the peripheral pouches, you get an Allen key and then two fused clapton's. Inside your peripheral pouch, you're gonna get a bunch of extra O-rings, which keep in mind the silicone ones are the ones that I'm not a huge fan of. These are the ones that get stained. They work well. They actually work better than the rubber, but these get stained, they leave a weird taste. One is silicone and the other one is rubber. 510 adapter, if you don't like the 810 drip tip that it comes with or using your own 810, you could utilize a 510. Triple tree, some extra post screws down there, and then you get a 510 pin, which is your ported one for squonking. Brian and Digiflavor decided on making the drop an original single coil versus a dual coil, just because there is a large demand for the single coil. The airflow's a little bit unique the way that they got this going on. It actually goes through the posts and the other side. Now you can't shut off the airflow individually. On the top cap, you're gonna notice that there's ridges. What that does is that allows you to select each line and each hole that you could block off individually. On the bottom of the dripper, drop solo, Digiflavor. Production date, 2018, that can't be right. 2018 September? How does that make any sense? We're in July right now. Screw down here is going to be for the negative post, locking it in. Let's take it apart. The outside of this may look very familiar to some people just because this is supposed to be just a smaller rendition than the original drop. Pop this off. Take a look at the thickness of this top cap. 
It's extremely rare to see a top cap that has that much metal involved in it. This looks good, it feels good, it's got good weight to it, but the only problem with having a really thick cap is it's going to retain heat and not dissipate it quick enough. Because this is a single coil, you shouldn't have to worry about whether or not this is going to get that hot to where you can't vape off of it. The grooves just like they did on the original drop. On the bottom of this, you have a little disc. This disc itself does in fact go inside the dripper. You see that? So that allows you to, one, make it a little bit bigger than what it normally is, two, keep a lot of the heat off of the top of your mod, and listen, some people may like the way that that looks, I do not. If you're interested in mixing and matching PMMA and stainless steel, you cannot do it. They made the PMMA a little bit shorter throw, so you're going to get more flavor off the PMMA deck than you are the stainless steel, just because you have that less much of a throw. The reason why the stainless steel doesn't work with the PMMA barrel is because of how long the airflow adjustment is, versus on the PMMA, it's much, much shorter. However, if you wanted to, you could use the PMMA on a stainless steel. The only problem with that is it's not going to cut off the airflow all the way, turned all the way up. That's the most you're gonna get, where you have the two on the bottom. It's a little caveat there. I'm wondering if that was intentional or not, because it would be really cool if you would be able to use the PMMA. If you look at the airports on the PMMA, you'll see that there's a lot less. There's only two rows vertically. There's nothing horizontally. Again, I think that they're doing this to really increase the flavor. Again, that's an assumption or a speculation, but I don't know why else they would do that. You don't have to worry about lining up the airflow because these notches right here that are raised up are gonna grab the barrel and stop you from having to move that around. It's going to keep them set in place. On the dripper deck, you have black O-rings, but on the top cap, you have a silicone O-ring. And then inside there, you have silicone again. When you build a coil, you have to build a coil like this, like you would on normal drop, and then you're gonna put your jig in or whatever you use to spin it, and then kind of move it down. Or what you could do is you could put your coil in with your legs going up, which is going to allow you to get that a lot lower. However, the airflow on this is almost like promoting a vertical, and we know how much I love verticals. That seems what it's designed for. Drop post scenario, different type of insulator they got going on, and rightfully so, because it is a single. A lot of people think that it's as simple as just cutting out two posts and being done with it. No, you can't do that. Just think of it like this, is because this is smaller, it had to be redesigned. Because this has a post that come out of it, it had to be redesigned. There's a lot of this that isn't exactly the same as the original drop. Obviously, the biggest point being is that there's missing a whole section of posts here. And then you have lovely flathead screws on the inside there. Not bad threading. Very smooth. You don't hear anything. That was a big post. I feel like the posts are a little too big for being a single coil, but if you want to put a really big build in here for showcasing it, again, it is open-ended and there is a little bit of a ramp. So what that allows you to do, let me show you. When you're putting the coils in and you're going up from the bottom, which is going to be a little unorthodox for some people, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the same build in this that I've been using for the past two days so you can see what kind of build I got going on. Most people are gonna put your regular coils in here, put them in, tighten it down, and then kind of move them about. What I do is an over and under. And the reason why I do an over and under, as you can tell, this coil is a little used, but the reason why I do an over and under is because what that allows you to do is actually get them in and you don't have to modify the coil in any type of way. If your legs are long enough, you're just gonna bend them with a pair of pliers like I did here. We're gonna put the bottom in first, bring it up, Put this one in, done. Just like that. And then we're just gonna screw, let's screw this down. That's it. It's that simple. And then obviously you can modify this a little bit. So that is an over and under. Doesn't matter how you put the legs in, just as long as one is in here, one is in here. What I'm going to show you now may be a little bit difficult for most people to do. I wanna show you how to put two verticals in this, not just one. One is very, very simple. The same way that you just did the horizontal is the same way that you're gonna do a vertical. The stagger Twin Towers. Oh, shit. Dual 26 with 34 on the outside. Just basically wrap it like you would normally, and then on the other one, wrap it the other way so they're side by side.
Here's my little guys with their haircuts. Okay, the reason why I'm building it like how I'm building it now is because I really wanted to maximize the airflow for the coils. The air is going to go directly through them. That's picking up at a 0.83. So you guys know when I'm always talking about, I need volts, I need volts, I need volts. This is why most mods, even dual battery jammies will not fire this. Well, it'll fire it, but you're not going to be able to do, you know, eight volts. You're only going to be able to do seven. That's why something like this with more than an eight volt cutoff is really good. And that's why I always prefer DNAs because they have a nine volt cutoff or 10 respectively speaking. Once again, that is the Drop Solo RDA. Let's bring it on the top. So we are back on top of the Drop Solo RDA with my Stagger Twins Dual Jammies 0.83. Sitting on top of the Wismec Arx Gen 3 Duo. Let me show you some vapor production. As you can tell, I have a bit of a different drip tip on there and I'll explain why in a second. Oh my God. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Oh my goodness. The amount of flavor I'm getting off this thing is amazing. I get it that it's not designed for a dual coil since the name is Solo. But a lot of the times when you have a single coil RDA, especially when you have something like this, guys, listen, I can't tell you how important it is to have the posts all the way to the left or to the right of the deck. The reason being is it gives you room to do something like this. It's the same thing that happened in the New York. As much as people hated that, I had so much build space to do shit like I did right there. Now, a lot of people say I don't know how to build or I don't know how to do this or there's no way I could be, there's no way you could be innovative. Uh, but. What I like to do is do things that are different like that. My intent with doing coils stacked like that side by side is because I remember the VLS. Those of you that don't remember the VLS kind of had the same deal with the coil and the airflow. I, they're way different drippers, but the idea is that the air was going between the two of them, not just around one. Now on a single coil vertical, which is what most people will use this as, it's not a bad dripper, by no means. There's a lot of airflow that's going through that post though. You guys have to understand that's a lot of airflow. You can really dial down your airflow setting. And as you can tell, I have half of one of the holes on the bottom, you can't even tell. Let's see if we can get a mouth to lung out of this. No, nope, it's too much airflow. Hmm. This RDA is not really designed for mouth to lung. Even though it's a single coil, a lot of people have this perception that because something is a single coil that it's designed for mouth to lung. That's so not the case at all. Like that has nothing to do with it. You can do a mouth to lung dual coil, but again, there hasn't been many that have done that, especially for drippers. There's like one or two RTAs, but that defeats the purpose. You're running dual coils you're already building low. Usually single coils are designed for types of builds, not necessarily like I have here. The ultimate question is, is the way that this was designed, is it designed for the single coil horizontal person or vertical? The airflow on the barrel is going straight up, dual slotted all the way up and then to a T. If you're going to build your coil higher up, it makes sense for that T section just to be cut off by itself. However, it doesn't do that just like it didn't on the original drop. All you could do is kind of cut off the top part, you know, as you're going from top to bottom. As a vertical coil RDA, this thing shines like a beast. Absolutely phenomenal. 
However, I don't think that it was designed with verticals in mind. The Solo RDA is a little bit tall for a single coil and usually people have that problem. Again, because I prefer verticals, I much prefer the height because if this was shorter, I wouldn't be able to get a vertical in there. Again, single coil horizontal is more than possible, but what you have to do with the single coil horizontals, you have to really cut down that airflow almost to where it's just the bottom two rows and then you're going to get a good vape again you may love this wide open with the horizontal even with the coils that i have in there now i can't run it wide open it's a lot of airflow so you could put a lot of power through this right off the top of your head think of a single coil rda that's pulseless that's all the way to the left or to the right of the dripper just think of one didn't come up with much, did you? So as much as that doesn't look good with both top sides and bending it down, I can agree. That's why you do one up, one bottom. It already makes sense because your coils are shaped like that. When you put wire, you have one on the bottom, one on the top. So just take a pair of pliers and just bend it. it it's not difficult whatsoever. I tried to do verticals like that where I had two separate verticals and they were kind of X and stacked. It worked but it was a pain in the ass. The way that this is right now, the way that this is built with these two twin tower coils, no matter what I say, it sounds like I'm being dramatic. The amount of flavor is fucking crazy. Zero to 10, a 9.5 for flavor. If we're looking at this dripper as a vertical only dripper, it's phenomenal. I'm not quite sure if I would recommend this as a first time dripper for anybody. If you already have experience, I don't think you're gonna have much of an issue. What you're gonna wanna do is if you don't wanna go under and you don't wanna go over the top, so you got one under, one top, you can put them both in normally and then drag it over. The best advice I have for you if you're gonna build this like how it's designed to be built with both in the top and then you push it over, you're really gonna wanna use four to five millimeters extra on your leg to make up room for the drag over. It's not difficult to make your coil like this. Uh, you can't see shit. It's like I'm showing you nothing. It's like a lint ball in my hand. All you do is just take a pair of pliers and twist it so it's L-shaped. That's gonna make your life so much easier for building on this. It may be a little daunting to do that. I'm not saying do the build that I have in here. By no means am I saying to do that because I feel that if you don't know how to do a series style, which is basically what that is, it's more like a sleeper, so to speak, because it's two coils, one wire. Where it is, by default, out of the box, running horizontals or verticals, I'm gonna go seven. A seven. If we're going for mere verticals alone, a 7.5 to like a 7.7. .7. I don't quite want to give this an eight just because I don't want to give it an eight. I don't have to justify why I'm not writing something an eight. It does come with its fallback for one. The drip tip on this is not very good. It's entirely too short. It has a really awkward shape, sort of like the 502 or the recurve, but it's much smaller than that. Kind of like a nipple. However, they do give you the other drip tip, but that drip tip to me is even worse some shit rubbing on my nipple. My shit's all perky. Just knock something off the table. Okay. Mm, nope. Mm -mm. I much prefer the stainless steel cap over the short throw. I would have also liked to seen where they were cross compatible, meaning that I could use a stainless steel cap on the PMMA and vice versa if you want to mix and match. Not quite sure as to why you would want to, but if they do release a Delrin rendition or Ultim, I feel that they just need to make it exactly the same as the stainless steel or kind of redo the stainless steel, which is kind of working backwards to make it cross compatible with those, which I don't think should be done. I think that at this point, if they're going to do it, just match it up to the stainless steel. You're going to get more flavor off of a horizontal on the PMMA cap than you will the stainless steel. The stainless steel, you're going to get better airflow and better flavor on a vertical. So you really have to pick and choose your battle. And that's why I'm going to go in the 7 to a 7.5 range. I think that that's more than adequate for what this is. I really thoroughly enjoy the airflow going directly through the two coils. That's the best style build that you could possibly put inside of this. Let's just say you practice that build and you try to get it down try to find another single coil rda that that'll fit in or a dual dual you really can't do that because well you have 
posts in the center of the dripper. In other singles, you have your posts on the side. I really think that this dripper is designed for the builder in mind. Or someone that likes really big coils, or someone that likes screenshots, pictures. That's where this is gonna shine. If you already have like the Reverie, or the Lucid, or the 502, you're not gonna have any problem putting verticals inside of this. If you don't do verticals and you despise them, listen, verticals don't have less flavor than horizontal. It's the same fucking coil. Like, <laughs> all you're doing is turning it. A lack of airflow hitting that coil will reduce that flavor. That's why the PMMA shines better with a horizontal than the stainless steel does. If the dripper is getting too hot, you have the option of using PMMA, which of course is not going to get hot. Just keep in mind, using any PMMA, not just this, keep your coils the furthest away from that PMMA as possible. Last thing you want is your coil to touch that, melt it, then you're gonna have a whole different set of issues on your hands that's gonna be a little bit difficult to unfuck. All in all, it's not a bad dripper for what it is. If I was to compare this to the original drop, I would still prefer this over the drop. It's not like I don't like dual coil RDAs. I just like when I have more room to do whatever I want to do inside of the deck. And that's why I like the Njord so much, is you're giving me room. Granted, the flavor between this and the Njord are way different across the board. The problem with the Njord was you had three different airflows and you had to line up coils with each one of those to get really maximized flavor. If you wanted to put dual coil horizontals in this, it's not gonna be difficult. You can either build sleepers like I did right there or build your coils normally and then do your L-shaped, both the same thing. So if you're looking at the coil, do both L-shaped and then do the other coil exactly the same. Put one in from the top one from in the bottom, tighten it down, now your airflow is gonna go right between them. I know it's not designed for what I'm saying to do, but that's what makes this dripper really fucking good, is the fact that you have that versatility of being able to put dual coils in this or a single vert where the airflow is going around the whole coil. And I've kept it real. Have you? James out.